Hello and uh, good morning. Wanted to uh, show you what you can do with a little uh, 3D printed uh, mixer here. Uh, this morning we've uh, got uh, one of the latest ink back batches. This is a uh, uh, carboxymethyl cellulose. Uh, uh, it's about a gram of uh, that material and about uh, 60 milliliters of uh, uh, water and about uh, uh, 25 grams of uh, carbon and kind of uh, 85 uh, 15 percent percentage by weight of activated carbon and uh, carbon black so it's fairly thick uh, we tried uh, putting this on our little uh, uh, magnetic stirrer and uh, very quickly it just grinds to a halt even with a very large magnet or it's just uh, too thick. We could thin it out but in this case we want a little bit uh, uh, thicker ink for this uh, some upcoming supercapacitor test. So we've got this uh, 3D printed stirrer that we uh, found on Thingiverse. We scaled it down so that the uh, Outside diameter here of the stirrer is just a little bit smaller than the bottom of the uh, the tapered cup here uh, It's chucked in a, a drill press so I can conveniently lower it up and down We're gonna turn the power on here and hopefully uh, not make too big of a mess. Let's see what happens Wow, that came out really nice. It's not exactly uh, like putting it through a, a, a wet grinder, but wow, what a difference that made in this ink. So I think we're uh, much better than we were uh, trying to uh, force this heavy syrup ink through uh, the magnetic stir. We'll be back to show you a few other things we've tried. One of the things that I like about uh, uh, this mixer versus obviously other things you could do uh, is everything is all plastic here, so we're not introducing any other, uh, you know, metals or atoms, molecules, ions, whatever have you from uh, any type of uh, metallic stirrer, grinder, etc. So uh, with that, we're going to go try and see what the... Uh, uh, surface resistivity is of this uh, latest batch. Hey, good morning. We're back. Uh, Going to start off where we uh, ended up uh, yesterday. Earlier in this video, you saw how we were stirring our inks with our little stirrer here. Again, the uh, the problem there was that uh, previously we'd make a nice thick ink. We pour it in a little cup, set it on our magnetic stirrer, but even with this very large magnet, the thick ink just was not uh, able to be uh, properly mixed and stirred. So doing a little uh, searching on uh, Thingiverse, we found a, a nice little stirrer here that we chucked in the drill press. We can raise that up and down in our uh, mixing cup. So that worked out well. Uh, I should point out that uh, when we send this over to the 3D printer with the slicer we have, we have the option to uh, scale it. So I scaled it down a little bit so it fit really nice in the little uh, disposable mixing cups we're using. It sits flush on the bottom. It's about the same diameter. So as, as that mixes, we're really able to uh, cover all the material. And after a few minutes, uh, infinitely better than what we were able to do before. The only thing I've done this morning is just with my little stick here just to make sure we've got a nice uh, consistent ink. So what we're going to do now is to uh, spread some of that ink and make, make some test samples where we can uh, compare it to uh, earlier batches in terms of uh, conductivity, surface resistance, 
uh, measured with our uh, square resistance probe that you've seen maybe in uh, uh, an earlier uh, video. So the problem with uh, spreading these inks, you either take your finger or a, a stick or some type of a little roller and try to spread it around, but it, it is impossible to get a, a nice even coat. Uh, I guess even more impossible, if you will, to get a consistent coat. Even if you have a nice way to uh, scrape it, one time it uh, might be a few thousandths of an inch thick and the next time uh, twice that. So we need something that's not only consistent, but uh, you might say even uh, repeatable and measurable. Uh, the thickness of the ink obviously greatly determines the, uh, the conductivity and at some point in the process of uh, you know, spreading this on an electrode for a supercapacitor, we want a controlled thickness, a consistent and even thickness. Uh, one of the ways to do that, at least I hope this is going to work, is what's called a Mayer Roller. That's uh, spelled one of two different ways online. You can Google this, M-A-Y-E-R or M-E-Y-E-R. And uh, developed by uh, someone way back when, I suspect a Mr. Mayer, to uh, do what, exactly what we want to do here, evenly spread some uh, thick liquids. Now you could have a very elaborate, I guess, roller system, not unlike a printing press, but if your ink is a little bit thicker or you want a thicker coating, then trying to layer it between uh, rollers of a, a printing press is even uh, difficult uh, in that scenario. With this arrangement here, the amount of ink that you put down, which eventually will determine the thickness once it dries, is a function of the diameter of these wires on the roller. The little gaps between the ridges here contain a consistent amount of ink, and that's what's left behind if you, as you roll it. And uh, although I haven't tried this yet, it sounded like a pretty good story, so we put one of these together. Uh, I'll... I'll uh, share the uh, the files online in the video but this is a little 3d printed handle and on that 3d printed handle we have this roller uh, if i take out the little uh, pinion screws here just to show you a few details a little uh, 3d printed cylinder it's got a couple little dimples in the end that uh, We'll uh, pivot on the uh, little ground down points on these uh, set screws, if you will. There's a couple of angled holes, one in each end, to sort of captivate the start and the stop of the winding. I tried to put a fairly even winding on here, but uh, as a word to the wise, you probably want to use something other than this very heavy steel wire that I had here. It was very stiff, almost work hardened and very hard to roll within that diameter, at least uh, consistently. I guess you could come up with another fixture if you're going to do that in production, but we just want to get something here going to uh, see if this roller technique is going to give us a nice uh, even ink. So we've got that back together. I'll adjust the jam nuts a little bit. There we go. We're going to try out a couple different uh, surfaces here. Um, we're going to start out with uh, just some uh, copy paper here. We're going to put a little blob down and roll this out. And when it dries, we'll uh, see if on a couple different uh, test samples here, we've got a, uh, a consistent uh, thickness and resistance. So let's give it a shot, see where this goes. We'll take just a little bit of our ink here. We don't want to waste too much of that. Put a little bit of that down. As you can see, this is new. I haven't tried this. Let's see what happens. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. There are uh, some ridges in there that uh, maybe will roll out or settle out. I don't know. It's soaking in the paper kind of quickly here. We can go in a couple different directions. Let's try that again. I'm just putting enough pressure on the roller here to uh, uh, make sure that the, uh, the roller is turning. 
We'll just go a little bit in two different directions here to see how that works out. Okay, we're going to set that aside. That's our paper sample. Uh, next, I've got a little piece of uh, plastic here. Just, just a little uh, binder cover. We'll see how, what happens there. This is going to be a little bit slipperier. Ooh, that looks good. This particular ink is an activated carbon and uh, carbon black mixture. I'm using uh, CMC carboxy uh, methyl cellulose as a, uh, a, uh, a binder. And then there's like a, uh, uh, I think it's a 2% uh, by weight uh, uh, SBR additive to give it a little bit of plasticity. Okay, on the, on the plastic it looks like it's sort of trying to wet, but uh, not perfectly, but uh, as you can see it shrinking up there. So we would probably need a little bit more wetting agent if in fact uh, we're going to have a, uh, a non-absorbing surface here. There is no wetting agent in this ink. Yeah, you can see it here just uh, kind of not wanting to wet. But anyway, we'll set that aside for now. And the main thing that we want to do is to take our little uh, carbon fiber test samples here. We've got another uh, test lined up where we we'll, uh, we'll want to compare uh, this sink in a uh, super capacitor with uh, some previous uh, batches. Now, I'm pretty sure that uh, since this has been kiln fired and the pores are kind of open and I can sort of rub it in there, we'll, uh, it won't have a wetting problem, but uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, that's not bad. Oh yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Let's do another one. Put both the uh, the uh, DXF CAD file and the uh, STL file uh, references in the video, so that if uh, you want to try something like this, I'm sure I'll be uh, trying a few different wires with it uh, in the future here, just to. Uh... Okay, well that is so much easier than what I've done in the past. This is a water-based ink. It's going to take a while to dry, so uh, I'll probably just go rinse this guy off, and uh, uh, we'll be back at the end of uh, the video here to do some resistance measurements and just to give you another data point to see how this works out. So for now, I, uh, I believe that's all we've got to share, so uh, we'll be back.